Hi, it's John from Android Addicts and welcome to this unboxing video of the Asus ROG Phone 3. So I imported this phone from China because it's not currently available in the UK. It costs $721 and it cost a bit more basically because I added the Aero Active Cooler 3 here, which we'll be looking at in more detail shortly. But that's the cooling fan, which is an optional extra for some regions and some models of the phone. This is the 12 gigabyte version with 128 gigabytes of internal storage. So it should be more than enough for myself. Maybe some people would want to go for the higher storage ratings here, 512 gig, but uh, that's a heck of a lot more expensive. So I've gone for the 128 gig, which should be more than enough for me. Okay, so in the top of the box, we have a cardboard section here, which I'm guessing has the SIM card ejector tool, which is pretty funky. It's a funky shape at least, and it's uh, got Republic of Gamers on there. We also have an included case. Let's just have a look at this. So this is a sort of hard shell case here. You can see the ROG on the side there and uh, a few other sort of graphics on this. It's quite cool. Um, but this is not gonna do much except for protect the corners, I guess if you drop it on one of the corners. Looking at this, I could probably snap that in, you know, if I bent it any further than that. So it's a bit fragile, not really gonna protect your phone too much, but it's a nice addition to have for free. So also included in that box, we have some nice looking stickers here, and we have a do not disturb sign, which is very important. You could probably put that on your bedroom door to make sure that your parents don't come in whilst you're playing. We have a quick start manual. Now I'm not going to translate that for you as I don't know uh, Chinese but uh, hopefully that's useful to someone and some other I presume warranty information which I'm certainly not going to be looking at. Okay so the phone itself let's pop this out and we'll just place it there for the time being we'll just see what else is in the box just while we've got it here then we'll get it out of the way. We have a handy three and a half millimeter headphone jack to USB-C cable connector. We have a nice braided USB-C to USB-C cable. So that's good for charging. And we have the actual charging brick here, which is the 30 watt charger maximum. So this is a single charging outlet, unlike the Lenovo Legion phone, which I reviewed recently but still 30 watts is pretty good it's still uh, you know on par with samsung and some of the other big players in the game so it's got a nice um public of gamers logo on the side there and that's about it okay so on the front of the protective sleeve here we've got a uh, sign pointing to a usb port and also another one saying do not insert a type c cable into this port so I'd say that's a bit misleading really because you know it's saying you've got type USB-C port here and it says don't insert USB-C cable. Now obviously we all know that it's because there's two connectors in here but for someone who didn't know that that would be slightly confusing. So anyway let's take this off and uh, see what's inside. Okay, so here it is in all of its naked glory. So it's, it's got a nice feel to it. I mean, it's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, so it is, it's reasonably heavy, but it's not too bad. I believe it's 240 grams in total. So that still weighs, you know, around about the same as my S20 Ultra. Okay, so we'll just have a quick look around the size of the phone. Here we have the air triggers either side here. They're even labeled ROG, which is quite nice. We have the volume rocker up and down. We have a sort of highlighted accent power key here. And we have a microphone. On the bottom of the phone, we've got a sort of offset USB-C connector. It's a bit of a shame that it's offset really because that means that the Razer Kishi will not work with this phone, but it is there at least anyway. We also have another microphone at the bottom here. And on the left-hand side, we have the SIM tray and we also have the special port, which will enable us to add extra additional features to our phone. 
Top of the phone, we have another microphone here, probably another ambient mic, and that's all we have up at the top. So at the top of the phone here, we have one of the speakers and the earpiece. We also have a front-facing 24 megapixel selfie camera. At the bottom of the phone, we have another speaker here and the mic, obviously, for your calls. So when you're holding the phone like this, you're going to get some good sound with these stereo speakers as they support DTS-X stereo. Okay, we have a look at the back of the phone here. It's quite a nice glass finish here. We have the Tencent Games and the ROG logo here on the back. This is a RGB logo which will change colours, etc. when the phone is on. We have the aerodynamic system heatsink here, as you can see, and it does change colours slightly in the light, which is quite a nice little effect. And we have a little inlet here for air to come in for the cooling. So yes, this phone is not waterproof. We have a dual LED flash here, and the camera setup is a 64 megapixel wide angle lens. We have a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens and a five megapixel macro lens. Overall in the hand, this feels really nice. It feels comfortable. It doesn't feel like it's gonna you know, slip out your hands or anything. And it feels like a good solid phone. You could certainly, uh, sit, certainly hit some of that and cause some damage. Not that you'd ever wanna use your phone as a blunt object. So let's just open this little connector port here and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so it's quite difficult to get this out. It's a sort of rubber bung, I suppose you could say, and it uh, it's quite tight in there. So obviously that's to stop dust and other bits and pieces getting in. But uh, let's have a look inside as to what we have. So you can see there reasonably clearly that there's a USB-C port on the left-hand side and this sort of accessory port on the right. So a couple of things to note about these USB ports on this phone. Obviously they're all USB-C. This is a 3.1 USB-C connector. Here we have a USB-C, but it's a type 1.0 for the accessories. And on the bottom, we have the USB-C, which is a 2.0 connector. So if you're gonna charge your phone, charge it from the fastest port, which is USB 3.1, rather than the USB 2.0. It will still charge from here, but it will be a bit slower. And we will do that test in the battery test. So anyway, I'm gonna turn this on and get that started. We can get a little warning on the setup screen not to put a USB-C connector into the bottom port. Okay, just whilst this is having a think about Wi-Fi, I'm just gonna have a quick look at the SIM card tray here. So we can see this is just a dual SIM. There's no option to have a micro SD card in there. So I'm just gonna set up the fingerprint here. and we'll see what it's like. We get to choose our theme here. I'll go with the Asus theme to start with. I'll probably end up changing it to a classic theme because uh, I'm not always a big fan of these sort of gaming themes that they have on these phones. But we'll just see what it's like. Okay, apparently ROG Elite desperately needs me to join the Resistance mission immediately. So let's see what happens here. Okay, that was slightly random, but uh, I guess that's one way to welcome you to a phone. Now it's asking us to join the Republic of Gamers. I'm just going to uh, close this for the time being and we'll have a look at it another time. And this is what you get when you 
first get into the phone. So yeah, it looks like a pretty simple setup. These are the pre-installed apps. We'll just go and double check our system version here. Make sure we're up to date. Yep, we're up to date. And we're currently running the May 2020 security patch. Okay, so I'm gonna stick the case on now. I don't think it matters which way it goes particularly. Oh, it does matter. We've got a hole in the top there. So I'm guessing it will go in this way. Now I always hate putting on sort of hard plastic cases because I'm always worried I'm gonna scratch corners and things, but uh, let's just clip this on. It's actually not too stiff. So that's what it's like with the case on. It actually, look, it actually, yeah, it actually looks quite nice with that case on, and I think it actually adds a bit of uh, extra grip because of this uh, section here. If you can hear that, it's sort of grippy. These bits here are not so grippy; they're a bit smoother. But yeah, the actual body of the phone is quite well gripped now. Let's just check out the fingerprint reader. That's nice and quick. Now this is an optical fingerprint reader, which is slightly different to some of the ultrasonic ones, but actually I'm uh, pretty impressed. And I like the little effect you get when you put your thumb on there. It's quite a nice little animation. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll just leave that over there and we will open the call up and see what we get inside. Okay, so like I said, I spent a bit extra. It's about $30 extra just to add this little fan. So I'm hoping it's uh, worth the extra money. So we get the fan itself. We get some instructions here, which I think we'll probably be safe to ignore. I'll just have a quick look. It's all in there. Uh... Oh, actually, they do have some English as well. I'll just go through that quickly. So you see we get the additional audio jack built into this. We've got the USB-C type port, and that does support 30 watt charging. We have the RGB light kickstand, and obviously that's the fan itself. And then we just get some instructions on how to attach it. Okay, so here it is. As you can see, the little fan inside there. It's not very big, so it shouldn't be too noisy. That's the ROG logo there. We have the... It's quite stiff at the moment, I don't know. Ah, there we go. It, uh, it's stiff, but it uh, does pop out like that for your kickstand. And even under the kickstand here, we have a nice Aero Active Cooler logo, some uh, rather funky line design there. And here's the connector itself. You can see the USB-C and the accessory port connector on the side there. Now, even just out of the box, this feels cool. Um, it's apparently meant to be able to reduce the temperature by about four degrees. So it'll be interesting to know whether that works. I think the reason it feels cool is that it's got a aluminium frame. So it's cool to the touch. And I think inside there's actually some graphene, which is uh, meant to be conducting the heat efficiently away from the, uh, the phone itself. So let's just have a look at the front here. Public of gamers. And we'll just close the stand back up very gently. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach this to the phone. Now, I believe this pulls up to give us a bit of extra height when we're first initially putting it in, but we will go with the port side first into the bottom here. And then once that's in, like so, and we can then close it up to give it a sort of a fully attached solid connection. That's not going to be going anywhere. And you can see straight away the RGB light comes on. 
start cycling through the various colors. And even the front logo is RGB and cycling through some colors. So if there wasn't enough RGB on this phone, you've now almost doubled it. So let's just pop out the kickstand again. And here is your new gaming phone. So that's the viewing angle there. There's no way of adjusting it anyway, but I think that's more than suitable for most people, to be honest. It feels it feels solid, the, uh, the kickstand, but I do think that would easily, you know, snap off if you did put too much pressure. When you're just, you know, obviously when you've got it standard and sat still, it's absolutely fine and you're not going to have any issues. Okay, so we've just had a message pop up here saying when equipped with a fan and enabling X mode, do you wish to always apply the level three performance to achieve the ultimate gaming experience? Well, I think we probably do, don't we? So we press OK on that. Docking your ROG phone on an accessory with fans may affect the audio quality of phone calls and recordings. When the built-in microphones are active, the fan will be turned off. You can change this in the Armoury crate settings. Please use the USB-C type port on the accessory to connect a headset, charge or transfer data. Now it's funny really, I mean, they say you know, connecting a headset, but how are you going to be connecting a headset if you have it in the stand mode like this? and the connectors are down here. So it's possibly would have been better if they'd put the connectors maybe on the sides here. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the mic around and we'll see if we can get a recording of the fan sound itself. It's not very loud, you can hear it though with your ears, but I'm just gonna try and get it on the camera as well. So I don't know if you could hear that, but the fan is currently going. Um, you won't be able to see it, I don't suppose, because it's spinning so fast. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a very slight sort of uh, hissing noise, I guess, coming from the fan. Okay, so we're going to go into X mode now by squeezing the phone and letting go. That basically sort of maxes the phone out to the best optimal settings for playing games, and it will use more battery, but basically it should be the best performance available. So if we actually go into the X mode, uh, sort of control panel here and we can see various uh, details about the phone, the current uh, CPU temperature, system temperature, the GPU temperature and the RAM details, how much battery is left and how much storage is left. We also get to set the fan speed here so we can actually adjust it ourselves. It's currently on low. Set it to max. I have heard it increase slightly. I, um, you'll just have to trust me on that. It does uh, make a difference. I'll leave it on low for the time being, or I'll leave it on auto actually. We can edit the system lighting. So if you want to change the color of your logo, then you can do and change the rate that it changes. There are some other settings in here, which I'm not gonna go into for a moment. But yeah, that is the X mode setting. So I'm going to turn that back off. And I'm just downloading PUBG and we'll just go through a game of PUBG just for fun and we'll see how it goes. Okay, whilst PUBG is loading up here, I might as well go through some of the other specs. So we've got a 6.59 inch AMOLED display and that's running at a full HD resolution. That's 1080 by 2340. So it's not 4K, but it's uh, full HD. And that supports a 144 Hertz refresh rate which is one of the fastest available currently. As I said previously, mine is the 12 gig of RAM with 128 gigabytes of storage. That's UFS 3.1 storage. And the phone supports Wi-Fi version six, which is the latest and greatest. We've got Bluetooth 5.1, we've got NFC, and we have the 6,000 milliamp hour, 30 watt fast charging battery. And that also supports reverse charging at 10 watts. Okay, so we've got the Ultra HD downloaded. UHD is still not available, so we're going to leave it on Ultra HD with Ultra frame rate. Now, we could move to smooth and go to 90 frames per second, but for the time being, we'll just have a look at what it's like with Ultra. Now, what we need to do is map our buttons. So we've got something called Game Genie. Now, this will enable us to do various functions whilst we're in a game. We can obviously see the frame rate, the temperatures, other bits and pieces, disable calls and alerts, 
but what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on the real time info so we can see the frame rate at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to set the air triggers here, so I'm going to put L over here and the R1 over here. You can set whether you want them to be taps, swipes, these are the actual uh, triggers themselves at the top. So you can have dual partitions, so there's two sections for each trigger and each section would do something different. I'm going to play around with that That's another time, but those are the current settings. I'll leave it on tap for the time being and we'll just see how smooth the game is. Again, I've got the frame rate and other bits and pieces here. I'll leave them up there so hopefully you can see. Currently we're running at 40 frames per second, 41. Now that's the max I could get on the Lenovo Legion Phone 2. As you can see here, there's absolutely no lag or slowdown whatsoever. Temperatures are running at about 35 degrees. So that's all good at the moment. Hopefully the fan itself, which is running, is going to be kicking in and keeping the phone nice and cool. So I'm just going to ignore my teammates for the time being and I'm just going to jump down. Yeah, this is as, as smooth as butter at the moment. We're running at an auto refresh rate. I'm going to set it manually to be 144 hertz. Yeah, these buttons are very responsive. You don't really need much pressure at all on them. So anyway, let's uh, just uh, get a gun and see if we can. So somehow I've managed to <laughs> kill these two people. Even though they uh, obviously had the upper hand to start with. I really like the feel of these uh, triggers. They're really good actually, very impressed. Okay, I've set it to smooth and 90 frames per second now. So we'll just go through a, a game on this and we'll just see how smooth it feels. I mean, as you can see, even whilst people load again, this is just running flawlessly at 90 frames per second. Not skipping a beat whatsoever. Okay, so that was PUBG. Just a quick uh, look at it, really. This, the fan is uh, doing its job well, I think. It doesn't feel like there's much hot air coming out of it, but uh, it's kept at about, what, 39, 40 degrees whilst playing. So that's more than acceptable, I'd say. 
And the CPU and, and GPU were basically sat there waiting for something, you know, hard to do. They, they just weren't uh, breaking a sweat. So yeah, this phone is really an absolute beast for gaming. I'll be sure to be doing some gaming tests with this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. I'm going to be comparing the Asus ROG phone to the Lenovo Legion phone here, and we'll see which one of these two beasts is actually the best for gaming in terms of value for money and pure gameplay. So be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss that video in the future. If you have any questions at all regarding this phone, let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. And until then, I will see you in the next video.